So here we are on day four of Ron week. Now this is the final day. Yes, our week is made up of only four days. Uh, we'd like to round up here so that's how we can get away with this. And today's video, uh, we're gonna be finishing off this part. We're gonna see some triangular mesh used on the floor, some swarf milling on the walls, and we'll see the helical bore tool path used in the five axis mode to hit some, uh, some holes. There'll be a brief introduction into doing some of the engraving on the text here. Be sure to check out the end of this video. I asked Ron a good question here and I basically asked him why he chooses to use Mastercam. So to hear that answer, be sure you watch all the way to the end of the video. And with that, uh, let's hop into our, our last episode here of Ron Week. All right, okay. now the next one is I went to geocentric tool path. And we look at this and again, cause I don't have anything on, you don't know what this is. So I'm gonna turn back on operation tight. And this is what they call a triangular mesh. Yes. I wanted to give, like I said, a little bit different ways to show this, to finish this floor. So I went to triangular mesh and I went to spiral. And a lot of people in five axis want to do the same type of tool path they do in three axis. So what they'll normally do is they'll go in and they'll do a three axis tool path and they'll convert it to five axis and they'll, you know, and, and it's, it's good. It does a good job, mm -hmm. but this tool path does the same thing without having to convert it and anything like that, make tool paths. So I can do it in one. So I threw this in here as well. It's just kind of a different way. Um, I'm not going to go into super detail. I think it's one I don't want somebody to kind of play, kind of explore, kind of see yep. Yeah, so, okay. but I, it is in here and we go look at this tool path here versus the one we just did. And you can see we get a nice five axis spiral going all the way down and we can just step this through. And it looks pretty straightforward, but it's when it's over at the walls, that's where the real magic is going on because it's actually tilting the head. Now, Something I'll do with people when I'm teaching them as well is I'll turn on vectors and I'll let them see the actual vectors that a tool path is creating so they can visualize in their head. How's that machine looking at that? How is it seeing the normal of what it's going to do for that motion? And I'll also sometimes save this on a level and use those vectors to drive other tool paths. Right. So that's part of the reasons that I'll, I'll do this sometimes is I'll just throw a tool path together to get the vectors. And then I'll use the vectors to go back and actually drive a tool path. And I'll play with the settings to, to do that. But as we're going through this, we can start looking at this. And a lot of people, they go, man, that's just a lot of stuff, man. That's just crazy. Well, <laughs> when I start zooming in and I start looking at these vectors, then I can make a decision. Okay, yeah, you know what? Maybe I'll do a little tighter. Maybe I'll do a looser. But we can see in this corner, we're getting a lot of motion to cut this surface. Right. As we get normal, you know, it looks pretty, pretty consistent. But this is one way that I'll determine what a five axis tool path is doing is just by coming and looking at the vectors. Another thing that I'll come in here do is I'll turn to interpolate. So if I'm getting into a tight area and I'm not sure, it's real easy to back plot it and miss it, especially in five axis. So right. if I turn on interpolate, I'll get to see that motion across the part Whereas from here to here, it looks great. But what I didn't see was it actually dragging the top of something I didn't see. Right. If I turn on interpolate, then, oh, you know what? I need to give a little more clearance. Oh, you know what? I should do this. Oh, I should do that. Again, it does take some time, but these are steps that are inside of Mastercam that anybody can use. So that's in there. Again, like I said, I'll number them. And then the last thing I did on this is I came back and finished the wall. So I just came back in and I turned off the holder earlier. I'll turn it back on, I'll turn these off. And I just went ahead and stepped down the wall. Nothing super fancy, but again, just wanted to kind of give an idea of a way that we can come in here and swarf this wall. I did not do the other side of this part. I thought that would be a good exercise and good something for, I've given kind of the basis of it. Yeah, so exactly, absolutely, yes. Here, you know, you can go at it. The next thing, I did is I came in with our uh, tooling ball here, excuse me, with our, our 
bullion mill. And these pockets, none of them are normal. I noticed I mean, that every single one of them, all different, at angles. different, different angles. Yes. So yeah. there, uh, let's see, there's 15, 15 different pockets or 15 different holes. They're all at 15 different angles. And I wanted to showcase how I can go in here and heel clip bore them, multi axis really quick. Again, no wireframe, no geometry, just right to the model. Yeah. So that's what I did. And I took a three quarter end mill, I went into my uh, geometry, and you can see they're all solid features. And there's our information. I defined them. Mastercam now takes this, uses this. I could rearrange this. I could change this. All the, all the stuff we had for sorting and stuff is still here. So if I wanted to change my sort, you know, all the different things. If I wanted to, you know, do some different things about inserting the point, it's all here. I just, I knew how I wanted to go about it. So I didn't do it anything fancy. And standard stuff cut parameters i just came in start on center zero zero um basic fifty thousand step down hundred thousands i mean hundred percent at the depth so i just control five axis now this is one that i left like this on purpose okay. a lot of people do not pay attention to the back plot rotary axis this is part of master Kemp's strength and when we go to put this on a machine for the machine simulation, sometimes this can mess with the software. And I've seen a lot of people just go through and not pay attention to this, like, man, this doesn't, this doesn't look right. Well, did you pay attention to your back plot rotary axis control? And what's that? <laughs> it's this guy right here. We're actually working in a Z axis. So Z axis is really where our back plot information, the cam action, everything for the master cam is looking at. So right. this is something a lot of people don't pay attention to. They just kind of run through it. Well, this is important. So if uh, you know you're always going to be in a Z, go into your uh, operational defaults and set it as operational default. If you like it, go ahead yeah, and save it. Absolutely. Make it your default. And that's another thing a lot of people don't do is say default. I don't do it a lot because I do so much different work. I mm -hmm. work in so many different machines. I, it's here. I, I just I just know. Cut this. Do, I mean, I, I'm... I'm going to keyboard. I wear out keyboards left and right. I think this is my third <laughs> keyboard in two years because I'm just going at 100 miles an hour. Yeah. But it's imperative. So it's all part of the process. And now I put raises on top of there. I didn't finish the raises. I put raises on top of this. I didn't finish that either. I wanted to leave some things for people. The next thing I did is I started on this and I didn't get it finished. And that was engraving the lettering. I was going to leave that for people to play with because mm -hmm. it's really, it's just, it's cosmetic. It's nothing really important, but I just kind of threw something in here with parallel to curve and I grabbed them all in my geometry. So everything's been grabbed for solid chain. I grabbed all the surfaces on the floor mm -hmm. okay. to define it with and I left it. Now it's not good. Did that on purpose because <laughs> I want somebody to, to, to play. I want somebody to try. Yes. You know, I want you to look at this and go, well, why? What, where, where in this can I do better to make this do what I want? Yeah. Now, I've done this many times before because this is actually one of the things I'll do for customers when I'm doing a demo part, uh, when I'm proving out a post for them, is I'll actually engrave their logo or their name into a part in five axis just to test the machine. But it helps for blends, it helps for kinematics, things like that for testing. Right. So okay. I threw this in here as well. And um, I'm not going to share how I did this, but this was all modeled in Mastercam. Nice. So <laughs> all of what we see here was all done in Mastercam. This was not done in external cam, I'm just going to CAD. This was all modeled and done inside of Mastercam. I think a lot of, a lot overlooked that as well is, is, is like you've just kind of gotten to, you, you can model quite extensively in Mastercam. Um, there's probably not much you couldn't model. Uh, obviously, the, when you get into more complex stuff, maybe a SolidWorks is a better choice, but if you have Mastercam, uh, it's pretty much unlikely that there's a part that you cannot replicate if you had to solid model it yourself. Well, I, when I first started this, I, that contract job I took back in 01, 
that we had to make an armament system for uh, one of the experimental uh, aircraft, or actually it was a, a helicopter. And it was a uh, involute type of, a, I call it spiral staircase, where 50 caliber bullets had to go into for this system. And it was all carbon fiber, so I had to make up all the layup molds. And the Helix, they couldn't model at that time in pro, pro engineer. But I had to make the molds and the models for the machine to machine it. And I kept, where's the models? Where are the models? And they're like, <laughs> we're having a hard time. I said, well, I can machine, I can model it master can. And they're like, that's a cam software. I said, I can model it master can. <laughs> so that's what I did as I actually used the helix and swept the solid and put the indentions in there for the, and I actually have somewhere in one of my toolboxes somewhere, the old carbon fiber, first one we laid up, prototype of that on the mold. And um, I have that and modeled in Mastercam. And I have modeled yeah. fixtures and tooling. And I mean, I draw all my solid tools and all this stuff. I just did a, a drill head for someone in Mastercam that was uh, quite a quite an undertaking. It was, it was very busy, very involved. But um, you know, there's a lot of tools in Mastercam. A lot of people just don't know how to use them. And I think that's, that's true. one of the things tools that uh, in the software, uh, you know, lot. <laughs> I've programmed well over 400 different types of machines in Mastercam since I've been doing this from routers to mill turns to wire DM to screw machines to um, three axis, four axis. So, I mean, I've, I've been very fortunate to be able to program what I programmed in it and I've always been able to get it done. Is it, is it, you know, the fastest, not always, but it's, it's a good tool and it's a good, good way for me to earn a living. And that's, that's, you pretty much just answered a, a question that I was going to eventually ask you. And that it was basically, why do you use Mastercam? Cause I'm not trying to sell Mastercam or anything like that, but you've been doing this for a long time. You're doing complex parts. Um, and yeah, how come you stick with Mastercam? And I think you've kind of just answered that already with just, you know, capabilities, right? Capabilities, flexibility. Well, I was asked that question uh, a few years ago, actually, by an owner of a company that so Katia House, and he's like, "Well, why don't you use Katia?" And I'm like, "Well, number one, it's super expensive. Uh, <laughs> I do this all on my own. This all comes out of my pocket. Yeah, you have some, you know, good relationships with people, and I'm thankful for those relationships. But you know, I bought my own seat of Mastercam. I bought my own seat of Veracruz. I have my own seat of NC Semmel. I have my own seat of a lot of other things. It wasn't cheap. It cost a lot of money. And if I was going to spend that money," why would I go in a direction that was going to be number one, more expensive and number two, not commonly used. I have gotten more uh, responses. I get emails all the time from people asking for help. Um, I don't advertise. I don't need to advertise. I almost All the work I get is word of mouth. It's hmm. somebody's heard of what I did or somebody's seen what I've done or some, I, mean, I, I got a day reached out to me. I don't know. It was three months ago. I was having problems and, Hey Ron, I'm troubling this. Can you answer? I took the time to answer a couple of questions, and and I don't mind doing that. You know, I mean, I, I I I can't explain why I do it. I just I feel blessed to be able to do it, and if I can be a blessing to someone and help them, then I'm glad to do it. And I think that's you know I think it's where a lot of people, you know, they want they want their instant gratification. I I don't care. You know, if I can be a benefit to you, great. If you don't like what I'm saying, well, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be mean. <laughs> sorry if my honesty isn't, you know. Yeah. You know, I'm just going to be honest. I mean, I, you know, I ain't perfect. I, you know, I can go sit here and tell you I am. But I think a lot of people um, maybe have too much expectation. Don't, don't have a realistic grasp of the concept. And um, it takes work. I mean, this is not easy. I mean, I'm, I'm up at, I was up at 5 a.m. this morning. I'll probably go on at 6 or 7 tonight. Cause I've got some hot projects need to be done and people are, you know, they, they, they need it and yeah. fine, we need your help. And they know I'm going to, if I got to work Saturday, all day Saturday, you know, I, I want to spend time with my family. I want to do, but when I need to take off and I need to do something, uh, Hey boss, Hey boss, <laughs> you know, I don't have to go clock out. I don't have to go get somebody's permission to, you know, I'm, as long as I'm meeting my customer's demands and, you know, doing that, it works there. I mean, I ain't always been peaches and cream. I mean, I've had some rough patches and you know, mm -hmm. this year has been rough, but uh, we still have work. I'm still in business and still keep, Hey, I got a roof over my head. I'm thankful for that. Yeah. Internet so, works. There you go. Yeah, it does. So. <laughs> what can you, 
what more can you ask for in life? Exactly. So I'll go ahead and get this follow over to you. And, That'd be fantastic. Uh, uh, appreciate all this time you spent today, man. I really appreciate it. Um, no problem. I'm sure that anyone that watches this video will, will say exactly the same thing. I'm sure there's going to be lots of questions that come up from this video as well. Um, so be prepared. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, uh, we'll try to answer them. And hopefully, you know, this is a benefit for everyone. And I'm thankful for the opportunity. And like I told you originally, I don't feel worthy of it. I appreciate you thinking that, uh, you know, uh, what I do is, you know, something to be worthy of. Because I, I'm like, I'm no different than anybody else the way I feel. I mean, it's like anybody can do what I do. Anybody. You just have to want to. And I think, you know, if you point, want yeah. to, you can do what I do. It's just, you got to want to do it. So takes takes time, takes effort. Yeah, like you said, you can, anyone can get here, but you've got to, you've got to, you've got to pay your dues. You've got to put the time in. You've got to make bad tool paths before you can make good tool paths. <clears throat> All that cliche kind of stuff. I've made <clears throat> my share of bad tool paths. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know until you actually make one, right? Sometimes you have to make one and it even looks good in master cam until you get out to the machine and you run it and you push go and you're like, Oh, that's not great at all. Let's go back to the drawing board. But yeah, you have yeah. to go through that before you know. So yeah, it's happened Bob, more than once and it'll happen again and I'll keep doing Absolutely. the same thing. So Absolutely. that's all right. Well, all, all right, right get back to my stuff. We'll wrap this up. We'll let you get back to uh, the, the paying work, the paying jobs. Uh, yep. Really appreciate this, man. I yeah, can't say thanks enough for what you uh, put together here. I really, really appreciate it. Thanks. Nah, thank you. And uh, we'll just see how this pans out. Hopefully, this will be something beneficial for everybody and go from there. Absolutely will. All right, man. We'll enjoy the rest of your day. All right. You take care. Have a good day. All right, see you. Take care.